Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. I'm Nilesh, and in this video, we'll talk about kernels and kernel ridge regression. We'll start out with a dot product and then talk about why and when to use a kernel, uh, what, what are types of kernels, and then we'll look at how to arrive at kernel ridge regression from ridge regression and end the video with code snippet. In the following video, we'll look at the actual implementation in Python. So this is the reference uh, that I've used for the equations in this video. I want to check out the page number 492 from the book by Murphy. Uh, Machine learning a probabilistic perspective. So a dot product is uh, we are simply multiplying two matrices. And the way you do that is shown here. We have this matrix X and this is a transpose of that. So by transpose uh, uh, what I mean is we are just flipping the rows uh, to columns. So x1112 now becomes a column in this particular. This row becomes this column in x transpose. And for multi, uh, for the dot product, which is denoted by the dot in the middle of these two, is by uh, this way. So we go by row and then by column in the other mat matrix. The x11 multiplied by x11 plus x12 multiplied by x12 and then for the next one we again go x11 multiplied by x21 plus x12 multiplied by x22 and so that's shown down here and if you look at an actual example we have 1 2 3 in first column 4 5 6 in the second column we flip that they become uh, the rows uh, shown here and if we do a dot product this is how we'll multiply 1 by 1 into 1 plus 4 into 4 so that's here and so on for the other terms now if you see this notation of angled brackets with a comma that's also a way to say that uh, it, that's the dot product of x and x transpose so the output then would be as shown here now in scikit in python we can use the numpy library to get a dot product by writing this np dot and then open close parenthesis x comma x dot t so that that will give us the same output now why when or why on when should we use what's the big deal about using a kernel so kernels are very powerful and uh, efficient way to uh, process data for examples in case of classification or regression in this case uh, think of this particular design matrix or a matrix with two feature vectors each represented by a column so first column is one feature let's say second column is another feature if you were to plot this uh, what we do is consider this 0 1 as one data point 1 1 1 0 as another data point and so if we plot them on a scatter plot, this is how it will look. We have feature 1 on x axis, feature 2 on y axis. On, so these are yellow dots and those are the purple dots. Now if we try to separate them, how do we do that? If we use a linear separator, uh, draw a straight line, that doesn't work. Uh, this doesn't work. We have a bunch of yellow and purple mixed. We try that again, we have the mixed uh, dots. So one way would be to draw a circle around the green uh, yellow circle uh, dots and that would uh, separate them from the remaining two dots uh, so there's uh, another way to do it and where we can use still use a linear separating method and to do that let's add a dimension to these data points so we are going to add uh, at coordinates for z direction so shown here in blue so 0 1 now becomes 0 1 1 and so on for the rest now if we try to plot these we see that the yellow dots remain at the bottom of this plot and the uh, uh, dark purple dots they are uh, shifted up on the z axis and now if you use a hyperplane such as shown here in blue we can easily separate out these two classes so that's uh, the Kind of the central idea of uh, uh, moving the data points from a low dimensional space to a higher dimensional space where we can use 
a separator where we can use a um a decision boundary such as shown here a linear decision boundary let's say to uh, separate the classes now a kernel uh, mathematically speaking what you are actually trying to do is replacing all inner products such as shown here uh, which are related to x and x transpose by this function which is k for kernel uh, x kernel and then x and x transpose so what are then kernels after all so kernels are of different types we have a linear kernel the example of which we saw on the very first slide then there is a polynomial kernel so if the a boundary decision boundary needs to have more wiggle room or it needs to be a little non-linear then we can use a polynomial uh, kernel there's also radial basis function so this kernel has exponential term in it and then we have the sigmoid function which has the tan h and all these values of uh, gamma and r those can be tuned based on uh, the uh, based on what the data set is so if you remember from one of the previous videos this is a familiar equation uh, objective function or a cost function for ridge regression where uh, we have this main term uh, where we are taking the difference for the y and then this is the uh, regularization term on the right hand side now in the reference that i mentioned earlier in this slide this is the notation that is used uh, in those uh, in that reference so here uh, shown that this is represented as shown here and then this is the regularization term which is the lambda and for x which is the matrix that has all the features uh, it's n by d dimensions and so the general approach is we differentiate this cost function by setting it to zero and then we find the uh, relation for the term w now in this term w this particular term that we get after different x transpose x that's of interest and we'll see why so what we are trying to then do is to kernelize ridge regression we are trying to uh, convert this w into x transpose of alpha we are trying to bring it in this format and so this is the same equation from previous slide understand we are not going into uh, a thorough detailed derivation i'm just giving you a high hand wavy uh, intuition here uh, what this should give some background as to uh, how those ridge is analyzed ridge regression is canalized so the equation that we saw earlier uh, we shift the variables x transpose and we move this on this side and that's the equation we have and from this we pull this parenthesis out and we represent that by alpha and the term x transpose x x transpose is now represented by k that is the gram matrix uh, which is symmetric or a kernel matrix and then we plug that in into this equation w is equal to x transpose alpha where we get this summation value of alpha i xi and that's the equation that we can now use for predictions so if this is a func prediction function f of x uh, is equal to w transpose x we can substitute the value for w and so we get this equation which is now mapped to the kernel space so we have x transpose i xi and xi transpose so we don't have the w anymore in there and so this x transpose x we can represent it by a kernel so k i uh, open close parenthesis x comma x transpose so that can now be used if we have a new data point uh, we can use this particular uh kernelized form of ridge regression to make the prediction and in code snippet the library we need to import is a new library from sklearn.kernel underscore ridge uh, import kernel ridge and then this stays the same we have the x train y train x test 
and then for this should have been reg uh, because we are talking about regression a uh, kernel ridge uh, uh, then we initialize this variable then fit on train set and then predict on the test set so that was it for this video i hope this video gave you some intuition about what is a kernel a when or why a kernel is needed and what are different types of kernels and finally looking at how ridge regression can be kernelized so in the next video we'll look at the actual implementation in python and see uh, how we can manually uh, get the same kernel matrix that the um, kernel ridge function or the inbuilt scikit-learn kernelizing functions give us until then please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you